Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Bitcoin video. We have seen a bearish monthly candle close. And what that means is that the month of March, as explained in yesterday's video, will most likely not be a very good month for Bitcoin. Right, what we've seen, as you can see on this monthly chart here, is a close below 23.4K, the red resistance line that we faced as resistance on two occasions in 2022, and on two separate occasions, of course, in January and February this year. We have closed below that, and we are at risk now of forming some sort of evening star formation. An evening star candlestick formation is when you see a very bullish candle, which we saw in the month of January, followed by a doji candle with a small candle body and an equal wick to the upside of a downside, which is the star, and then followed by a bearish candle formation. If the month of March is a bearish candle formation, and more specifically, if we see that bearish candle formation close below 19.5K, that will be very bad for the future of Bitcoin. What I am looking for this month, and this is very important, I am looking for Bitcoin to see a correction. We'll look into this in a second. But even in the midst of a correction, we need to maintain the monthly candle above 19.5K. We cannot lose that level on the monthly chart. Losing that level on the monthly chart will be bad. will be very bad, actually. And it will probably lead to us retesting this yellow uptrending support line at around 17.5K on the weekly chart. And if we lose that support line, that's when we need to start questioning the four-year cycle theory. Okay, so look, here's my view on Bitcoin. I've made it very clear. I'm going to say it again. Four-year cycle theory is correct until it's not. I believe the four-year cycle theory has predicted the bottom. I believe the bottom was in at 15.5K or whatever it was. I believe the bottom is in, okay? My invalidation for that prediction is losing this uptrending yellow line on the weekly chart that has stemmed back all the way from 2013. If we lose that, the bottom is no longer in. If we lose that, we're probably going to see new lows. But the monthly candle is very important as well, because in order to maintain macro momentum and be on the path to achieve the targets at which the four-year cycle deems necessary, right, which, you know, ideally would be over 30k by the end of the year, we need to be making good progress. And losing 19.5k after struggling with it for so long as support will not be a good sign. That will be a step in the wrong direction. So I believe this month, the month of March, will most likely be a red month. And I believe we'll be ranging between 19.5k and 23.4k, or more likely ranging between 19.5k uh, and top of the range at 25.2k, I should say. Uh, but ultimately, if we close above, right, if we take the month, we close above 23.4, any monthly candle close above that level would be a direction of macro breakout and any monthly kernel kind of close above that red 23.4k level would be an indication that we're going to move to the upside and continue the run to the upside in a macro scale because there is very little resistance right historically speaking there's very little resistance between 25 and 28.6 and obviously breaking above a macro level at 23 will mean a move above 25 and hence a move above 25 will mean a move to 28 so I know it's a mouthful. I know it's a lot to take in. Uh, you, you, you're probably best off taking some notes in that regard and rewinding what I just said and writing it down. But the ultimate overall picture is this. Daily chart, Bitcoin doesn't look particularly good. We've got an ascending wedge formation. We've got a bunch of support levels which overcomplicate things. We've got bull market support, man, etc. But ultimately, it doesn't look particularly good, I wouldn't say. Uh, and ultimately, after that monthly candle close, we can expect some more consolidation, potentially some more correction. Um, obviously, it, you know, the invalidation for that, of course, would be breaking above 25.2K, breaking above the top of the range, of course, invalidates anything because the, the, the entire range uh, is, of course, the most important thing, right? The top of the range being 25.2, which we validated in August. August and we retested in February. Break above that, everything goes out the window, we're going up. Okay, until then, it looks relatively rough. Uh, and I just wanted to quickly take a look at that monthly candle close to tell you it failed to succeed. It failed to close over the critical level. And so that's not particularly good. But at this point in time, you know, what I'm really looking at and what I'm really considering now, now that we're likely to have a red march or at least a, a you know, at least a sideways march, you know, basically a ranging march would be a better way to put it. I don't know particularly... Uh, if red is the right word to, to use potentially. Uh, but look, here's the thing, okay? The monthly candle close wasn't good. We can say that. And, and we can say that based off that, it's more likely than not we see some consolidation or potentially correction in March. And based off that, we need to take the bearish arguments a little bit more seriously than we did before. Even though this is healthy, it is a time in which we need to do that. The bearish argument at this point in time that I've identified in multiple videos and I still stick by is based on two charts, okay? 
The first chart is this, Wyckoff accumulation. Now, this is a rough one. I don't necessarily take Wyckoff too seriously, even though Wyckoff has certainly played out on Bitcoin before. For example, we saw Wyckoff distribution uh, in both of the peaks in the 2021 bull market, right? We saw Wyckoff distribution here. We saw it here as well. Same pattern. We also saw Wyckoff accumulation over here, right? So three times, one, two, three, we've seen Wyckoff play out quite well on Bitcoin and ultimately lead to uh, price action in the direction that was deemed by uh, that was deemed acceptable by Wyckoff patterns. So we're seeing Wyckoff accumulation now. Uh, and based off of that, you know, you could say that we're going to go downwards and, and you could say we're going to form a new low. Uh, and, you know, and, and that's that's a fair enough argument to make. The only problem with it is it ignores the four-year cycle theory and it ignores the macro moves we've made to the upside. It ignores the fact that Based on a 12-year trend, and I'm, I know you guys get sick of hearing about this, based on a 12-year trend, the bottom is in. Four-year cycle theory, which is based on six micro trends, presidential cycle theory, and the halving. Also considering the fact that based on macro trends as well, such as the 24-month downtrending line that we had on the RSI on the weekly chart that broke to the upside, okay? That doesn't really look like something that happens bef you know, after, uh, before a bottom's in, okay? On top of this, we broke, a again, a 24-month wedge to the upside, a pink wedge. We also bounced off of a 10-year-long support line in the yellow line there. These are not things that happen you know, before you bottom. You don't go down and bottom out to, after doing these things. These are things that happen at the reversal. So I believe that even though Wyckoff is historically very accurate for Bitcoin, and even though it's certainly playing out here again, there are many factors here that would that would you know out overweigh the argument. When you're when you're analyzing a chart, okay, you need to take the bearish argument and the bullish argument you need to weigh them together. Right now, the bullish argument is certainly stronger on the macro basis, and this correction we're seeing in March here is not a you know super worrying indication that we're going to crash. It's actually quite healthy. It is healthy to consolidate. It is healthy to correct after such a gigantic move to the upside. You have to remember, guys, we moved upwards 62% in a period of basically, you know, basically three months. Okay, basically three months. 62% in three months. Most of the gains happening within a 30-day period without any correction exceeding 10%. Okay, so to act like this is like a reversal point to the end of the world, we're going to crash... You don't really have the evidence to support that at this point in time. When the evidence starts flowing in, if it starts flowing in, we can start to shift our argument. But at this point in time, I don't think the bearish case is very strong. However, again, we do need to look into it. Wyckoff is one of them, and Wyckoff will take a little bit more seriously when it starts to play out more, if it starts to play out more. For example, if we start to lose things like 19K, then I'll start to take it a little bit more seriously. At this point, it's just kind of speculative, and it's a weak argument in comparison to the bullish argument. But the thing that validates... Uh, well, it wouldn't validate, but the thing that would, uh, I guess you could say, go in conjunction with the Wyckoff argument is this chart here. In yellow, what we have is interest rates, okay? And what you can see is that interest rates in comparison to the Bitcoin price action has historically been pretty on point, okay? What we had is that when interest rates topped out in 2018, that was the same week Bitcoin bottomed. When they started going down again in 2019, that was the same week Bitcoin topped. And when they bottomed out here in 2020, that was the same week Bitcoin bottomed out. Now, as of right now, the reason why I'm not particularly confident in this trend of, of interest rates determining Bitcoin price action is because we have actually seen some deviation here okay when interest rates started raising again okay in 2022 we saw no effect on the bitcoin price the bitcoin price did what it was doing before okay and so that gives a, a degree of deviation coupling this with the fact that this is the first time the federal reserve has raised interest rates during a bear market uh it does lead to some uncertainty in the fact that they're doing different things to what's happened historically and so the historical trends might not hold as much weight but if you're ignoring that, which I don't think you should do, and that's why I'm bullish, but if you're ignoring that, okay, you could say, well, interest rates, according to the Federal Reserve, are going to top out in June. And so you could say Bitcoin is going to bottom out in June. And then you could apply that back to the Wyckoff accumulation argument. And you could say Wyckoff accumulation is going to play out until the month of around June. And that is when Bitcoin will finally bottom. And then from that point onwards, as per Wyckoff, we would start going upwards and doing something like that. That would be the argument, uh, an acceptable, I would say, that would be the acceptable bearish argument to make. And that is the argument that I will be monitoring closely and keeping on my radar because that is the opposing argument. 
whenever I've made an argument in my time in the Wolves Crypto YouTube channel, which has been since around May 2021, and whenever I made an argument in my time in Wolves Crypto Telegram, which has been since around late, uh, I mean, early 2020, February ish, something like that, I have always given the opposing point of view, even when I disagree with it. This right now is the strongest opposing point of view I can find for the bearish case. I do not believe in the idea that, oh, the S&P 500 is going down, therefore Bitcoin will. I think that's a ridiculous argument. And there's many reasons for that. I've discussed them all in the past. Firstly, okay, for your cycle theory, you're ignoring it. Secondly, Bitcoin is more closely related to gold in fundamentals. And so if there was a recession, it is reasonable to assume that Bitcoin will act in a way that gold acts in a recession rather than in the way a, a, a stock acts in a recession, for example. And the third of which is that Bitcoin is reverse correlated to the DXY, not directly correlated to the S&P 500. So there's definitive reasons why I don't believe in the whole recession equals downwards argument. But this argument here with Wyckoff and this argument here supported by interest rates as a date range for the bottom is probably the strongest bearish argument I can find. Now, with that said, as I've said before, I certainly do disagree with it. But as we go into March, which could potentially be a red month, we do need to monitor the levels of which this argument might get validated and we do need to monitor it, monitor it closely. I am not one to hold biases. I believe at this point in time, the four-year cycle theory is the strongest argument. I believe at this point in time, the Bitcoin has bottomed in December, in, sorry, in late November. I believe that, okay? But I'm not biased. If something happens that invalidates that, I'll jump ship. I'm not afraid to, okay? I'm not going to be this person who's going to sit here and, and have a bunch of pride and, oh no, it's correct, it's correct, until you've lost all your money. That's certainly not who I am. So you guys can rest assured, as viewers of the Wolves of Crypto YouTube channel, that I don't operate on a level of bias. You have to remember, I am a trader. I am not an investor. I do not care where Bitcoin goes. I make money regardless. And the entire people, and everyone in the VIP group knows that. If you're interested in the VIP group, interested in trading altcoins, swing trading altcoins, not investing, swing trading altcoins, on a sub daily basis, you can join the VIP group. We've got the results down there. We're extremely profitable, as you can see from Q4. We do trade sub daily on basically all altcoins available on the BitGet exchange. And, and you know, we don't care about where Bitcoin goes because we make money regardless. And that should give you a level of confidence, confidence in this channel that you might not be able to have with other channels who are heavily reliant on the Bitcoin price action. But regardless, I do want to say one more time because a lot of people will like to, uh, you know, selectively hear what I say. I do not think that Bitcoin will see a new low at this point in time. I think the bottom is in. I think that we'll be seeing mid 30K price regions by the end of the year. I think that by August or September, we will be testing 28K at the latest. I think Bitcoin is bullish, but this month ahead right here might be a little bit rough. We'll wait and see. Uh, obviously, I could be wrong about that as well. In fact, just today, and just in the time I've been making this video, we have seen some bullish price action. But ultimately, until we get above 25.2, none of that really matters. Uh, so we do need to wait and monitor and, and just check and, and you know, uh, wait around what see what happens there. And we'll, and we'll make videos on that in the future. But tomorrow, I do have a very important video. I'm going to be discussing Crypto Crew University and a claim that he made quite a while ago that every single cycle, the gain on Bitcoin from bottom to top gets divided by 5.2%, uh, by 5.2, uh, why I disagree with that claim. Uh, and he's basically predicting a 90K or 80K top on Bitcoin based on that claim. And I, I heavily disagree with that. I think that Bitcoin will be seeing a uh, price in the, in the, you know, 180K region uh, by 2025. And that's a video I made a couple of days ago, which you can watch as well. So guys, sign up to the BitGet Exchange using my referral link. It is the best way you can help the Wolves Crypto YouTube channel. And it's the best way you can help yourself as a trader and investor. They have the lowest fees in the market, five times lower fees than Binance, non-KYC. They learned from FTX. They have a protection fund. So you can make a claim to the protection fund and get reimbursed on your funds if the exchange goes down or if you lose your money uh, on the exchange. Obviously not by trading. I'm talking about by a hack or something like that. Uh, and yeah, so sign up using my referral link, 15% discount for life, best way to help the channel, go ahead and do that. Also, the Crypto Academy, if you want to learn how to trade, you want to learn how to do analysis, the way I do it and the way, my, the way my friend Megawell Crypto does it as well, you can learn how to trade using the, the Become a Trader 10-unit course on the Crypto Academy, which you can find all the information about on the website. The link will be in the pinned comment and description. Finally, the VIP group, guys, 100 USD for three months, trade altcoins with me sub daily, extremely profitable, learn how to trade, put your plan into action. Because I'll tell you right now, this is a post I made the other day. Time's not on your side. Uh, I'll read it out right now. Bull markets only occur once every four years. In each bull run, there is less and less opportunity than the last. The time to improve was yesterday. The second best time is now. Don't be a fool who buys in late, right? Don't be a fool who buys the top. 
Don't be the fool who wasted the bear market and has no trading knowledge to take advantage of the bull market. The halving is in a year. A year ago, we were below 40K. A year is not a long time. Get your head in the game, start learning how to trade and start paying attention. And you can do that using the BitGet Exchange, the Crypto Academy and the VIP Group. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next video.